Hello, it's Tuesday, it's nine o'clock. I'm Joanna Gosling in for Victoria. Our top story today, a man is shot dead in a police operation near the M62 motorway in Huddersfield. We'll be live at the scene with the latest details. Also today, we return to Great Yarmouth, one of the towns most in favor of Brexit. To find out how people living there feel about the EU six months after they voted to leave. I haven't got as much faith in it as I did previously, as obviously I voted out. And um, I just think things are slipping a little bit. And after 10.30 today... Baby, I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. Some of the most hotly tipped films of 2017 are released here over the next few weeks ahead of the Oscar nominations. We'll look at some of the best and ask if the row over racism in Hollywood is driving change. Hello, welcome to the programme and a happy new year. We're live until 11 this morning. Dentists have criticised what they've called the workplace cake culture, saying the sharing of sweet treats in the office is contributing to health problems. They've called for a change in 2017. So is this sensible advice or an attack on the little things that make office life a bit more enjoyable? Do get in touch on everything we're talking about this morning. Use the hashtag Victoria Live and if you text you will be charged at the standard network rate. Our top story today, a man has been shot dead by police in an operation near the M62 motorway in Huddersfield. West Yorkshire police say the incident was not related to terrorism. They added that the operation last night was pre-planned and that three people were arrested. Another two people were arrested in a related vehicle stop in Bradford. The Independent Police Complaints Commission has sent investigators to the scene near the M62. It's the fifth fatal police shooting in England and Wales within nine months. Our Home Affairs correspondent Correspondent Danny Shaw reports. Thank you, Phil. Now let's catch up with the rest of the day's news with Ben in the newsroom. Hi, Ben. Hi, Joanna. Thank you. The Ministry of Defence says a British soldier has died in Iraq. The soldier from the 2nd Battalion, the Duke of Lancaster's regiment, died near Baghdad following an incident which is now being investigated. The regiment is training Iraqi and Kurdish security forces. The death was not the result of enemy activity. The soldier's family has been informed. And we'll have more on that uh, coming up on the programme where we'll be live at King's Cross Railway Station and hearing from campaigners. Uh, but uh, that's the latest from me. More at half past nine. See you then, Ben. Thank you very much. Let us know what you think about rail ticket prices. Also coming up in the programme, we'll be hearing from a Paralympic athlete who says she had to wet herself on a train because the disabled toilet was broken and staff failed to help her. She's speaking out this morning because she doesn't want anyone else to go through the same thing. That's coming up after 10. If you'd like to get in touch, all the usual ways. Don't forget, hashtag Victoria Live, and if you text, you'll be charged at the standard network rate. Now let's catch up with the sport with Jessica. Good morning, Happy New Year. Uh, let's start by talking about um, Pep Guardiola, Manchester City manager. Not a happy man yesterday. Yeah, thank you, Joanna. Happy New Year to you too. Yes, journalists received quite a frosty response, shall we say, from him last night and his rather unconventional interview has caused a bit of a stir, particularly, particularly on social media. <coughs> Interestingly, though, before all of that, before his side had actually beaten Burnley 2-1, Guardiola had said he was arriving at the end of his career and that the process of his goodbye from management has already started. He's only 45 at the moment, relatively young in management terms, but he insists he doesn't want to still be in the role when he's 60 or 65 so you just wonder if he's beginning to feel the pressure a little bit <laughs> thank you very much Jess we'll see you later the Brexit vote came as a shock to many in the political establishment. Yet many of those who voted to leave the EU could have told them that levels of dissatisfaction with Europe, especially over the issue of immigration, meant it should not have come as a surprise. After the vote, we visited Great Yarmouth in Norfolk, which delivered the fifth highest leave vote, with more than 70% of residents voting out. Six months on, as Brexit gets closer, our reporter Michael Cowan has been back to speak to some of those he met at the time to ask them how they feel about it all now. 
Well, if you want to watch that film again or share it, you can head to our program page, bbc.co.uk forward slash Victoria. After 10, we'll look ahead to all the political stories like to, likely to dominate in 2017. And of course, Brexit is going to be one of the main ones. Vicky on Facebook says, if there was another vote, I think it would be a much closer thing, as I know loads of people who wish they had voted differently. Janet on Facebook, I feel no differently today to how I felt on the 23rd of June. I'm still upset that the small majority voted leave and disgusted that the government had done no planning for such an eventuality. Brexit does mean Brexit and foot dragging by this government may just be storing up even more problems. Just get on with it and get the best deal you can. And Anthony on Facebook, I personally believe that those in power, including Mrs May, are delaying the process as much as possible in the hope that something legal will turn up to stop the UK from leaving the EU. Something like the legal challenge that is currently in the courts, anything to stop us leaving the EU. Thank you for those comments and do keep on getting in touch. Still to come, in a moment, it is the first day back for many at work and protests are being held at stations across the UK to highlight the cost of rail travel. We'll be talking to people in just a moment for their thoughts on that. Let us know your thoughts as well. Also coming up, a Paralympic athlete was forced to wet herself on a train because there was no accessible toilet. We'll speak to her. Now let's catch up with all the news with Ben in the newsroom. Hi. Hi Joanna, thank you. West Yorkshire police say a pre-planned operation in which a man was shot dead by an officer was not related to terrorism. The watchdog, the IPCC, is investigating the incident near the M62 in Huddersfield yesterday evening. And that is a summary of our latest BBC News. More from me at 10. Thanks Ben. See you later. Let's catch up with all the sport again with Jeff. Hi again. Thanks, Johnny. Yes, I have the headlines for you. Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola says he's arriving at the end of his career and that City might be one of his last teams. His side beat the full update for you just after 10 o'clock. See you then. Thank you very much, Jess. A man has died after he was shot by police in West Yorkshire. It happened on a slip road off the M62 in Huddersfield yesterday evening. Police say the incident was not related to terrorism, but it was pre-planned. Three people were arrested there, and another two people were arrested in a related vehicle stop in Bradford. Well, the BBC reporter Rahul Tandon was actually just driving down the motorway slip road when it happened, and we can talk to him now. So, Rahul, what did you see? Thank you, Rahul. Now, as commuters head back to work today, protests are being held at train stations across the UK to highlight the cost of rail travel. It comes the day after new fares were announced, with an average price increase of 2.3%. Passengers in the south of England are still being affected by strikes, with a week-long stoppage on the Southern Rail Network planned for Monday. In a moment, we will speak to a group of commuters here in the studio. But first, let's go to our reporter, Daniel Bircher, who is at King's Cross Station this morning. Over to you, Daniel. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Coming up, a British man with no previous experience has been killed fighting alongside Kurdish forces in Syria. We'll bring you the latest on that after the news. Now, though, let's catch up with the latest weather update with Thomas. And it is very frosty again, isn't no, it? Oh, Suddenly yeah. taking a real turn for the, for yeah. the colder. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell you what, this morning I was in my car, 3.59 in the morning, shivering. Mm. I wanted to go back to bed car completely frozen but you know Jack Frost last night really was painting with a thick paintbrush got some amazing pictures this let me show you pretty that's yeah. the thing I mean, oh, wow. look at this I mean yeah. it almost looks like some sort of three-dimensional map of I don't know some planet or something mm. I don't know I, th I, th I think that's the I think that's the roof of the car yeah I saw I lots of car roofs like that yesterday yeah. it's quite stunning amazing yeah. and this person obviously was uh, I think it was Daisy wanted to get a frosty <laughs> <laughs> message across yeah. got icy roads for yeah frozen cold Get the message. all of that yeah. all yeah. of that but you know what uh, tonight it's not going to be quite so frosty we've got slightly milder weather uh, heading our way so after that cold and frosty start as we say uh, we've got some sunshine around but really the best of the sunshine is going to be across southern areas look at the clouds in the north they're starting to invade the UK and that's also it's going to be uh, soggy and mild 
Hello, it's Tuesday. I'm Joanna Gosling. Coming up before 11, a man is shot dead in a police operation near the M62 motorway in Huddersfield. Police say it is not related to terrorism. Also, we'll speak to the former Paralympian who was forced to wet herself on a train because there were no disabled toilets. And after 10.30 today... We'll look at some of the best new film releases and ask if the row over racism in Hollywood is driving change. Very, very. Let's catch up with all the news with Ben in the newsroom. Over to you. Thanks, Joanna. Good morning. West Yorkshire police say a planned operation in which a man was shot dead by an officer was not related to terrorism. The police watchdog, the IPCC, is investigating the incident, which took place near the M62 in Huddersfield yesterday evening. Five people were arrested as part of the operation, including two from a related vehicle stop in Bradford at the same time. Our reporter, Rahul Tandon, was stuck in traffic with his family after police closed the road, and he's been talking to Joanna in the last hour. And that's the summary of our very latest BBC News. More from me at half past ten. Joanna. Thanks, Ben. See you later. In a moment, we'll have more on the British man with no military experience who has died in Syria fighting alongside Kurdish forces. We'll have the details and find out why he chose to go. Do get in touch with us on everything we're talking about. Usual ways of getting in touch. Hashtag Victoria Live. And remember, text will be charged at the standard network rate. All right, let's catch up with the sport with Jess again. Hi. Yes, thank you, Joanna. Manchester City are back up to third in the Premier League after a 2-1 win over Burnley. That's all the sport for now, Joanna. I'll be back with the headlines at 10.30. Great. See you later. Thanks, Jess. A 20-year-old from Sussex has been killed fighting so-called Islamic State in northern Syria. His name is Ryan Locke, a chef from Chichester who had no military experience whatsoever before travelling to join Kurdish forces in Syria last August. Well, we can go to BBC South's Home Affairs correspondent Emma Vardy. She joins us in our Southampton newsroom. And Emma, tell us first of all a bit more about Ryan Locke. I have to check in with you several times, no doubt. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we can show you now some incredible footage from the United States of two-year-old twins, Bowdy and Brock. Their parents decided to share this video to raise awareness of the dangers of not bolting heavy furniture to the wall. It looks absolutely horrific. They, they, neither of the boys were injured, thank goodness. Uh, I, I mean, absolutely extraordinary, isn't it, to, to watch it. I, th I think in a moment, the little boy who's on top, look, he tries to lift up the chest of drawers to get his, his brother out. I, amazingly, the brother who's pinioned under that chest of drawers is not injured. And look there, he's, he, manages, he manages to get out with the help of his brother, but just very shocking images. And uh, the parents have chosen to put those pictures out to, to let all parents out there know, just drill furniture to the wall to stop anything like that happening. Now, still to come, in a moment we will talk to a Paralympic athlete forced to wet herself on a train because there was no accessible toilet. And at 10.45, we look forward to this month's film releases because it's going to be a top month for film releases in the run-up to the Oscars. We'll also ask if Hollywood is taking diversity seriously after the Oscars So White controversy last year. with all the news with Ben. Thank you, Joanna. West Yorkshire police say a planned operation in which a man was shot dead by an officer was not related to terrorism. That is a summary of the latest BBC News. Join me for Newsroom Live at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll be live at the scene of that police shooting in West Yorkshire. For now, though, back to you, Joanna. Thank you, Ben. See you later. Now let's catch up with the sport with Jess. Thank you, Joanna. Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola says he's arriving at the end of his career and that City might be one of his last teams. All the sport for now, but more on the BBC News Channel throughout the day. Thank you very much, Jess. See you later. A Paralympic athlete and MBE awarded disabilities campaigner says she was forced to wet herself on a train because it did not have an accessible toilet. Anwar Fula Strike says she was left humiliated after the three hour journey on a cross country train with no working disabled toilet. Despite her embarrassment, she's decided to go public in the hope it will bring change for disabled people. Well, we can talk to Anne now from her home in Harlow in Essex. And also with us in the studio is Sue from Disability Rights UK. Thank you both for joining us. Um, Anne, tell us 
what happened then? You were on the train and, and, and realised that there was no working disabled toilet for you to use. Okay, okay. Well, the, the nominations for the Oscars are out on the 24th of January. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much for your company today. BBC Newsroom Live coming up next. I will see you very soon. Victoria is here tomorrow. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye. Well, after that uh, frosty start across the south of the UK, the